Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a fantastic day. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. According to statistics, there are now more than 500,000 ordinal inscriptions on the Bitcoin blockchain. As the trend, I think it's a bit more than that, continues to gain significant traction. For those of you who don't know or simply missed the news at some point over the last like, two and a half months, uh, Bitcoin now has NFTs. However, they don't call them NFTs, they call them ordinals. Why? Who knows? Uh, they don't call it minting, they call it an inscription. So Bitcoin always has to do something dramatically different. The first time that we heard about this, I think there were like 500, and then there were like 16,000, and now apparently there are half a million NFTs ordinals now on top of Bitcoin. On-chain data also shows that since inscriptions started gaining popularity last month, Bitcoin or people who are mining Bitcoin have obtained around $2.66 million in fees. The people who validate or help the transactions or keep the network safe, they get paid every time that one of these transactions goes through. And because of the extra transactions, they have earned an extra $2.6 million because of these ordinal inscriptions have surpassed 500,000. And at the time of writing, there are approximately 522,000 NFTs on the Bitcoin blockchain. Essentially, the technology behind ordinal inscriptions allows people to embed all types of data. So not just images, not just JPEGs, not just any kind of things. It can literally be anything. And you can, in, you can inscribe it, an inscription, uh, directly onto a Satoshi. So it's kind of... And I wonder what this will do for the actual value of Bitcoin in the future as far as... So let's say you create a an NFT, you know, it's a 3D dancing dinosaur on the moon. It's absolutely beautiful. You know, it, it sells for tons of money on the Ethereum blockchain, but it's not written directly onto ETH. However, let's say the Louvre at some point decides to fractionalize and sell off the Mona Lisa. And someone ends up buying 16 fragments of this digitized version of the Mona Lisa. Uh, he has a digitized portion of his housing portfolio and he, something else rich people have. And then he inscribes, inscribes all of that onto one Satoshi. That's how, you know, these ordinal inscriptions are working. Does that one Satoshi then like, is it no longer worth a Satoshi air quotes? Is it worth like, you know three Bitcoin at the same, you know, it, you know, I, you know, it's this kind of thing that I'm, I'm wondering about because that one Satoshi is no longer in theory to us. You know, one Bitcoin is always worth one Bitcoin, but you know, there's a limit because those Satoshis have a house on them and some of the Mona Lisa. So I would definitely value that more than a Satoshi. Inscriptions data include text, images, Audio, video, and applications. The number of ordinals surpassed half a million on the 17th of March, according to data hosted on Dune Analytics. Statistics show that 31% of inscriptions are in PNG format, or 162, I don't know why they have the exact number, 14% are in WebP format, and around 7% are in JPEG format. And here's the little nice image for it right here. I also tried to enlarge it. It kind of worked. Not really. You get the point. Like you see like the line is is going up. Yeah. So Bitcoin has NFTs now and I assume will always have them for a while. Uh, one of the main discussions a couple of weeks ago is that Bitcoin and I mean it, it must be like Bitcoin purists like extreme uh, were quite annoyed that these things existed. They thought that it would slow down the network. They thought that it was Something that wasn't necessary for the Bitcoin blockchain. But I kind of, I would beg to differ. If you believe that Bitcoin is or should be or will be the only blockchain on the planet as many Bitcoin uh, purists believe, I would assume that through the digitization of everything, if you can digitize artworks and digitize contracts and digitize real estate and ownership... I would assume you would want that to be directly on the Bitcoin blockchain. 
like directly on it, not on another layer, as it is immutable. No one can take it away. No one can stop it. So it only then goes to further show how strong the Bitcoin blockchain actually is and is also, you know, making more people use it. Like those 500,000 NFTs would have been on Polygon or on Cardano or on the eventual XRP NFT space, but now they're on Bitcoin. So what happens when you have 75 million pieces of art and or real estate or transactions or things happening just on top of Bitcoin, it strengthens the network. Yeah, that's the Bitcoin NFTs continue to rise. I um, shudder to think of the fact because I know that it's going to happen and this happens to me all the time. I mentioned to this, I mentioned this to you in 2021 and I think around 2018 as well. There's always something that happens uh, with a blockchain that I see happening but I have so many other things that I'm paying attention to that I end up missing, you know, what's right in front of me. So at some point, there's going to be an NFT project, an ordinals project, excuse me, uh, launched on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. I'm going to be like, oh, wow, that's cool. Those look like rocks. And then I'm not going to buy one. And then during the next bull run, people are going to be like, oh, did you buy a Bitcoin rock? Because they're worth 2.6 million. And I'm going to go, no, I did not buy a rock because at the time I just saw a rock. And not a financial opportunity. So that's basically just telling me, myself, I need to figure out what NFT projects are actually being uh, launched in this thing. That's the Bitcoin Ordinal Inscriptions news. And yeah. Let's move on. In, well, of, of course, Microsoft has apparently introduced an Ethereum-based cryptocurrency wallet in the testing version of its Edge web browser. I do not know one single human being or otherwise who has ever or wants to use Edge. It's so weird. A lot of times when uh, you like you click on certain things online and it'll re it'll open up Edge for you. Like it, it'll give you Edge as like, you know, hey, use Edge instead. And I'm like, Edge, please stop. Like no one actually wants to you, 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 use you. The new feature. Which, which software sleuth Albacore discovered is simply named Crypto Wallet and would allow users to store and transact Ethereum and Ethereum-based tokens in a non-custodial way, acting like a MetaMask clone. MetaMask, years ago, nobody was using it. It was really janky. It was very weird. I tried using it, and I was like, nope, let me take my money off of this because I have no idea what's happening. And now MetaMask is huge. It's gigantic. Everyone's using it. It has so many different features and it's been integrated into this and you can send your money from that and you can now, I think you can link it up to your PayPal and you can do all these other amazing things. So it makes sense that Microsoft would be allegedly trying to make a a clone of it. Uh, and also on the fact of them, it or it, it's simply saying crypto wallet, but it being Ethereum based and based around Ethereum tokens. I am nearly certain, 99%, I believe that Microsoft is a member of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. Go look up the members of that alliance. It's about like 500 companies who are using, will use, or will be building on top of Ethereum in the very near future. So the Microsoft name uh, building an Ethereum wallet does not surprise me one tiny bit. Cryptocurrency and Web3 projects are making inroads into mainstream software projects. According to reports coming from Albacore, a software researcher, Microsoft is currently developing a native wallet that would act as part of its own web browser edge. The new feature called Crypto Wallet would allow the users to transact and store Ethereum and Ethereum-based tokens in a non-custodial way. In the screenshots available, Microsoft confirmed the status of the project warning that testers about the danger of using their funds in the wallet. It stated, as a tester, you will use your own funds in the event of loss of funds. Microsoft will not reimburse any loss. This is a confidential project. <laughs> Apparently not. And no details should be shared externally. Oops, sorry, we already got it. So yeah, unsurprising. Um, you have noticed and will continue to notice that over the course of the next few weeks, uh, we are going to be hearing an enormous amount of news flooding from different companies that they are working on different cryptocurrency projects. None of this is surprising, but they keep acting as if we just for some reason were unaware that they were going to be doing all of these things within the cryptocurrency space. I mentioned to all of you before, every single one of you, uh, every 
company, and, 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 I, and I dare say every company worth half a billion, if not more, billions, is into crypto in some sort of way. We're just waiting for like actual, what's the word, uh, confirmation from them. They have to step into the light and basically announce to us that these things have launched. Uh, there's news about, I think, what was it, the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ is also uh, taking a foray into the space. We heard news that BlackRock and Fidelity are going to be launching stuff, I think, at the end of quarter one or the beginning of quarter two. Everyone's into it. There, there's no real secret anymore. And this is the interesting part that I find that a lot of this news is being launched and or is coming out at a time when cryptocurrency prices are still lower because you normally would hear this news as prices are pumping. I don't think I have it in this video. There's also like some banking news where a whole bunch of banks have, I think 1,300 banks somewhere have all just announced they're also getting into crypto. And it's like, you know, they know what's going on. They, I believe that. They understand and feel the shift that's currently taking place within the world. Um, and I just think that that's currently where we are because they know that crypto is not going down. And I mean, like, not price wise, but as in, like, you know, down in a fight. So, anyway, that's the apparently, allegedly, a company called Albacore has dug around and found that Microsoft is working on an Ethereum wallet simply called Crypto Wallet. Uh, in their Edge browser, so just a matter of time before they've uh, wrinkled out all the creases, crease out all the wrinkles, ironed out all the creases until it's done and then we get the news of it. And yeah, let's move on. In, whoa, this seems oddly familiar because it keeps happening all the time. As Bitcoin returns to a nine-month high roughly around 28,000, a growing number of on-chain signs show the asset may be entering an early bull market. What? That's crazy. It's not like everyone's been talking about that. On Monday, blockchain analytics firm Glassnode said the Bitcoin market appears to be shifting gears amid a turmoil within the traditional banking system. So you have to understand a couple of things. Uh, the world is poo-poo right now, but a lot of people believe one way or another that Bitcoin will benefit from it. Uh, if the world continues to be in this current state, a lot of people believe that Bitcoin uh, adoption will rapidly increase as people simply turn and realize, hey, there's a better way, there's a better option. We've seen this before historically. Like, th th this isn't a new thing or like a, or a wish or a hope or a dream. It's more of a, during down times economically, people do tend to shift and try and figure out, hey, if my money's not safe there, where can I put my money? Then on the other side of it, is that um, on the growing continuation of news that we've been getting, that there are allegedly, apparently, other banks that aren't doing too hot. Um, the rumors of further cash injections by world governments and uh, central banks continues to rise, therefore indicating to a lot of people that there may be um, another continuation of 2020 and 2021 as far as Governments needing to step in, as we've seen them lightly doing in the last couple of weeks. But if that does accelerate, then, of course, the markets will move back up. Bitcoin will benefit. You know the entire story. According to the firm's weekly report, Bitcoin's monthly average transaction count reached 309,000 transactions a day. Wow. This week, its highest number since Bitcoin surged to $64,000 in April of 2020. 2021 feels like a lifetime ago. You know how much stuff has happened since then? Oh, gosh. Less than 12% of all days experience more trades like this. Meanwhile, there have apparently been over 122,000, 122,000, uh, new unique users that have been appearing on chain every day, which is higher than nearly 90% of all other days. I, I will repeat that. More than 100,000 people have been new people have been appearing on chain every single day during all of this nonsense that we've been going through. Most of those days were concentrated around Bitcoin's peak in late 2017 
and the 2020-2021 bull run. They said as more people interact and transact within the Bitcoin economy, it is typically associated with periods of increasing adoption, network effects, and investor activity. Rising activity is also driving network congestion and fee pressure. I mean, but it's, listen, it's not as bad as it used to be. Bitcoin used to have like $35 transactions, and that was a that was a time in history. But now, like normally, Bitcoin has transaction fees of around five, six, seven cents. But during the last couple of weeks, especially if you've been watching a lot of the videos at the very end of the videos, uh, you see like it shows like Bitcoin transactions fee and like it's just like 85 cents. So it's, it's extra pressure, but I don't mind 85 cents and or $1.50 uh, compared to trying to send $15 with a $35 transaction fee. That just isn't too nice. And fee pressure, which Glassnode calls a common precursor to more constructive markets. Uh, yeah, we saw that multiple times before in 2017. And also, I want to say the end of 2020. Uh, everyone was looking at it like, why Why are the transaction fees so high? This was the 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 beginning of Ethereum having, remember those? Yeah, don't forget, having like $200 transaction fees. That was when NFTs, for those of you who weren't here, my goodness, NFTs were selling for like three, four, five million, like each individually. But the transaction fees were like $800. And everyone was like, who's paying those transaction fees? And we were like, oh, wait, I would totally pay $800 in a transaction fee if I was about to make $2 million. You simply, you simply would not really mind. Also in the news as well, echoing exactly what we were just talking about, how they get such a blurry photo, how they no one found anything else smoother. Tether CTO Paolo Aradoino recently shared his bullish outlook on Bitcoin during an interview with CNBC's Arjun Karpal. As the cryptocurrency currently trades below 30,000, Arduino believes it could easily retest its all-time high of slightly above 69,000 US dollars, which happened in November of 2021. To achieve this milestone, Bitcoin would need a 151% increase in value from where it currently is. And there's a little chart right there. Ardono cites geopolitical everything. Everything is a mess right now. Nothing makes any sense. Oh my gosh, if you have a chance, watch, the, like these have recently been like trending on YouTube. Find videos on like the um, Hong Kong housing crisis, which has always been a thing for the last 20 years. You know, land is very scarce there. But they're actually, ha they, they have to, build new land into the water now to actually make new housing because like things are, like you don't get it things are bad everywhere like it's not just where you live it's not just on the news like it is it is a mess everywhere and the ongoing hyper banking crisis as factors contributing to the growing appeal of bitcoin as an alternative investment he sees the flagship cryptocurrency as increasingly decoupling from traditional financial markets making it an, alt an attractive hedge against potential future crises. For those of you who uh, also didn't see, he also mentioned it, like I think a little bit lower, somewhere around there, blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of... <sighs> One of the more popular numbers floating around, there's someone who believes that uh, in the next, I think it's now like 83 days, that Bitcoin is going to skyrocket to $1 million dollars. Uh, so I think anything below that seems relatively reasonable. A lot of people are discussing, and I, it's 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 the same thing over and over and over. These people know the metrics; they know exactly what's going on. They see the increased adoption. Like it's not just us who's getting glass node news. Uh, they're all looking at the exact same numbers, and we are currently once again in this really weird spot where everyone's kind of coming out talking about like. Bitcoin's about to go up. Ethereum's about to do this, but Bitcoin's about to go there. And everyone's kind of like this like hype and momentum uh, causes people to re-get back into the market, to get new people back into the market. We usually always, and I know it makes sense, but we just need like a, a catalyst because normally if something good happened, Bitcoin would go up by six, seven, eight percent, and everyone's like, wee! But with all the increased attention in the last three months, if we get a major catalyst, it could be anything, but in this time period, we're assuming like extra cash injections into banks and stuff like that. Like that, that that's what kind of remember the other day where Bitcoin rose by I think it was 18% in 24 hours, like something like that. 
uh, that gets prices to completely pump over and over and over. So that's basically all that we are waiting for. Also in the news as well, it says billionaire bond king Jeffrey Gundlach predicts the Fed will cut rates substantially soon. It's just a lot of mm, speculation. Everyone thinks that something amazing is about to happen. And I, for one, uh, do hope that it is a a self-fulfilling prophecy. That'd be wonderful. Uh, people believe that Bitcoin is about to pump at some, like in the very near future. This isn't like uh, give us September, give us October. It's like, no, something's wrong. Bitcoin's about to pump. People think that Ethereum is about to do extremely well because we are on the cusp and or near its next update. People believe that the Fed might not be raising interest rates anymore because they kind of said that they were thinking about stopping or people think that the next one won't be as bad or people think that they're going to be cutting rates. So I appreciate all this positive energy that everyone's throwing out into the world as far as like, you know, making money once again. Uh, But we'll see what ends up happening. Once again, we have no we have no choice. Time will move forward with or without us. So we will definitely be seeing if any of these things come to fruition. Um, I'm myself almost dropped my pen. I'm more so just waiting to see uh, what the Fed is going to do. They they seem to be the gigantic ist uh, actor in all of this. As 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 far as I um uh, where things are going to go. This man standing on a box. And saying the numbers 25 and 75 has subsequently moved the entire world's market multiple times. So I think the moment we hear him say there is no increase this month and there will not be any more over the course of this year, I think we're good. So anyway, that's the everyone's talking about Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market are about to go to all new brand new highs, $64.99 million dollars and all that other stuff and sure i at some point one of these things is going to happen so we'll we'll see we'll be dragged into it we don't have a choice that's just how the cryptocurrency market works and yeah let's move on also in the news that is it is, is that supposed to be goku i have no idea i literally have no idea what that's supposed to be it says on the 16th of march Sony Interactive Entertainment published a patent called, (laughs) you guessed it, NFT Framework for Transferring and Using Digital Assets Between Gaming Platforms. (coughs) That's such a long, convoluted name for a patent. In the new filing, Sony explores a framework for using NFTs cross-generationally and cross-platformally. Not a word including consoles made by Nintendo and Microsoft, VR headsets, AR headsets, PCs, and more. I think this is kind of the next like step for everything. Uh, I'm, con- I'm completely here for it. Uh, I can't imagine being able to play a Nintendo game while I'm interacting with something on Sony, uh, but I'm, I'm, to- I'm totally there. The technology giant explores numerous use cases such as NFT locked gameplay, limited use in game tasks, and more. The patent filing shows the company's enthusiasm for introducing a solid NFT framework that allows gamers to obtain or transfer ownership using digital assets, including other perks. For those of you who were not here in 2017, no, I want to say 2018, 2019, before they were even called NFTs, the original idea was is that you'd be able to, at some point in the future, basically take gaming assets or any assets that you had online and you would be able to transfer them into another system. So you're using something on a video game that you play on your computer. Well, guess what? We're in the future. So now you can transfer that directly into your Resident Evil game and all the other kind of things like that. I still haven't bought it. And I, and I, and I, and I know that I need to because everyone keeps giving you like really high scores and I'm going to... Anyway, so the point is, um, in unsurprising news... Um, a lot of companies years ago who mentioned that they saw no value in NFTs and would not be exploring them and or creating them and or you might remember years ago, remember when everyone hated NFTs? NFTs are the worst thing in the entire world and everyone was losing their mind online. Now that all all the dust has settled and these and these people no longer are throwing their hands up in anger at people creating NFTs, now the big companies are finally 
starting to uh, walk into the space as well. To me, it makes a lot of sense. I like the idea of being able to, this is me personally, being able to own my assets. Or if I'm playing a video game that I really love, being able to take that asset into another game sounds completely insane. Like I would love to take my Master Sword and my Mirror Shield from Ocarina of Time, love that game, and actually throw them. Anyway, so yeah, Sony has announced this. Uh, we'll see what ends up happening to it. I assume this will take a while. I don't know why. I just feel like it's not going to happen overnight. But at least, you know, the the intent is there. That's the Sony news and whatever this little figure with golden hair. I don't know what that's supposed to be news. And yeah. Let's move on. Also in the news, U.S.-based crypto exchange Coinbase has decided to communicate proactively on crypto staking, which has recently attracted a regulator's attention. The companies, they, they, so Coinbase has been making a lot of petitions. Uh, the last three weeks has seen Coinbase, now this is my opinion, uh, I have seen Coinbase go from a company that relatively ignored the little guy uh, in pursuit of the higher net worth individuals. Um, however, in my view, as the SEC has recently come out in opposition of everything that crypto exchanges are doing, Coinbase in particular uh, has come out with a number of things. Remember the thing online about a week and a half ago where they were telling people on Twitter like, hey, come together, raise your voices in opposition against the SEC. And it's like, well, you didn't really need us a couple of months ago, but now they do. So this is another petition that Coinbase is trying to start uh, in opposition of the US SEC, trying to explain why staking uh, cannot be labeled as a security. If you missed it, the U.S. SEC believes, and this was apparently part of their problem with Kraken as well, the other cryptocurrency exchange, is that they said or the SEC alleges that the cryptocurrency exchanges did not divulge enough information to us as to what they were doing with our funds, i.e., hey, you have 10 Ether, you give it to Coinbase and they're staking it. But they say that we did not, us, the common person, have enough information as to if these coins were actually being staked. Were they actually in a protocol? Were they simply a number that was sitting on a screen? Or was it simply a service that Coinbase was providing? I.e., me, TMI, I go, hey, give me your Bitcoin and I'll give you back a 10% return at the end of the year through TMI staking. You hand me your Bitcoin at the end of the year, you get the 10%, but you don't know, am I getting that from my rental income and I'm simply passing it on to you while I hold on to your Bitcoin? It's kind of something like that. So with this, the SEC came out and said that they believe that the crypto exchanges are simply holding on to the coins and therefore they're offering staking as a service and that the coins are not to the SEC actually being staked within the protocol. Everyone up to date? I tried to explain it as, as, as simple as possible. The petition for rulemaking was published by Coinbase on the 20th of March. In an 18-page document, the firm focused on how securities laws treat services related to validating proof-of-stake protocols. It was written in response to the SEC's February crackdown on Kraken's staking program. The SEC charged the exchange with failing to register the offer and sale of their crypto asset staking as a service program, which it qualified as securities. This is nonsensical. These people are out of their minds because as far, listen, if Kraken was doing what they should have done and they simply held on to the coins and then put it into the system to actually stake, they did nothing wrong. However, the SEC believes, no, the SEC is trying to, I told you this thousands of times, they're nearly irrelevant. They have no actual, they have nothing to do with the cryptocurrency space. They keep, and it's not even like lightly overreaching. 
They have reached to the other side of the dinner table. They have crawled over all the food and they took the chicken off your plate. This is what they're currently doing because they're looking for a way to actually have to remain in this new financial system. They have no relevance in any of this. The only thing that they actually have relevance in is if a company actually comes out and creates a coin and tells you, what we do as a company will reflect absolutely on this coin. That then constitutes a security. Everything else, they're reaching as far as they possibly can. This is why everyone hates the SEC right now, because we all know, like there's a, there's a point. We get it if you're trying to uh, say that you want to help American citizens, and, and this goes out to any regulator. Now, you want to help your citizens by you know making sure that they're not in these scams or these other things like that, but then you wait five years before you actually make any regulations. You don't care about people. You care about money. When the SEC sues all of these companies, I told you this. Never forget this. A lot of times, these companies have to pay back two, three, four, five, ten million dollars. X, the the rip of people from Ripple are currently they they've spent over one hundred million dollars in 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 fees against this lawsuit. When the fees get paid to the SEC, how many of you have received any of that money back? Right, absolute silence. So this is once again just a ploy by the SEC to try and remain in control. I wish there was a regulator for this regulator. I'm a little saddened that no one in the Senate, no one in Congress has stepped in, but also, you know, corruption runs very, very deep. Uh, this was relatively popular news. Uh, Coinbase is probably, I could say, uh, feeling the heat right now because they were one of the crypto exchanges who definitely tried to make sure that they were at the forefront of regulations and tried to... Hold hands with the regulators, but look at where that got them because the SEC is destructively corrupt. News. Yeah. Let's see where that petition goes. Let's move on. Oh, also before any of you forget, uh, never forget this. Uh, as the cryptocurrency space is supposed to work by itself without cryptocurrency exchanges, you, yes you, you can stake by yourself. There are wallets online where you can do all of this by yourself. You don't have to rely on a cryptocurrency exchange and you don't you then do not have to pay the cryptocurrency fees, the 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 staking fees on the crypto exchange. So, um, I would look into the wallet called Exodus as you are allowed to stake by yourself. Uh, just throwing it out there because a lot of times when people hear news like this, they get discouraged and they think that they won't be able to stake. No, crypto exists by itself. I tell you that all the time. We do not need cryptocurrency exchanges. They are there because they want to be the new banks. You can do everything by yourself. That's the point of crypto. News. Moving along. Yeah. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I'm just going to see if, if, if it actually pops up. Last block three minutes ago, this is for Bitcoin. It usually shows the transaction, the current transaction fee for Bitcoin. Yeah, $1.17. And for Ethereum, it's 69 cents. You know, it, it could be a lot worse. And Ethereum's will probably get a lot worse if we ever have any uh, major pumps in the market. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day. Great morning. Great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, supporting, and or just listening to me rant and rave about this space. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.